Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Translated with Commentary By His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Adi Lila Chapter 7 Lord Chaitanya and Five Features Text 128 The Vedic sound vibration Omkar, the principal word in the Vedic literatures, is the basis of all Vedic vibrations. Therefore, one should accept Omkar as the sound representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the reservoir of the cosmic manifestation. Purport In Bhagavad Gita 8.13, the glories of Omkar are described as follows. Om it yet kaksharam brahma vyaharan mam anusmaran ya prayati chajan dehan sayati paramam gatim. This verse indicates that omkar or pranava is a direct representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, if at the time of death one simply remembers Omkar, he remembers the Supreme Personality of Godhead and is therefore immediately transferred to the spiritual world. Omkar is the basic principle of all Vedic mantras, for it is a representation of Lord Krishna, understanding of whom is the ultimate goal of the Vedas, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. Vedais Chasavai Rahameva Vedya. Mayavadi philosophers cannot understand these simple facts explained in Bhagavad Gita, and yet they are very proud of being Vedantists. Sometimes, therefore, we refer to the Vedanti philosophers as having no teeth. Danta means teeth, and ve means without. The statements of the Shankar philosophy, which are the teeth of the Mayavad philosopher, are always broken by the strong arguments of Vaishnava philosophers, such as the great Acharyas, especially Ramanujacharya. Sripad Ramanujacharya and Madhvacharya break the teeth of the Mayavadi philosophers, who can therefore be called Vedantis in the sense of toothless. The transcendental vibration Omkar is explained in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verse 13. Om Ityekak Sharam Brahma Vyaharan Mam Anusmaran Ya Prayati Chajan Deham Sa Yati Paramam Gatim Translation After being situated in the yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable Om, the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the supreme personality of Godhead and quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. End translation. If one actually understands that Omkar is the sound representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whether he chants Omkar or the Hare Krishna mantra, the result is certainly the same. The transcendental vibration of Omkar is further explained in Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 9, verse 17. Pitaham asya jagato mata datta pitamaha vedyam pavitram omkara rik samayajar evacha. Translation. I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, 
the purifier, and the syllable Om. I am also the Rig Veda, Sama Veda, and Yajur Veda. End translation. Similarly, the transcendental sound Om is further explained in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 17, verse 23. Om Tat Sad Itinur Desho, Brahmanas Tri Vidhasmita, Brahmanas Tena Vedas Cha, Yagnas Cha Vihita Pura. Translation From the beginning of the creation, the three syllables Om, Tat, Sat have been used to indicate the supreme absolute truth, Brahman. They were uttered by Brahmins while chanting Vedic hymns, and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. Throughout all the Vedic literatures, the glories of Omkar are specifically mentioned. Srila Jiva Goswami, in his thesis, Bhagavat Sandarbha, says that in the Vedic literature, Omkar is considered to be the sound vibration of the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Only this vibration of transcendental sound can deliver a conditioned soul from the clutches of Maya. Similarly, Omkar is also called the Deliverer, Tara. Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the Omkar vibration, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Therefore, Omkar has been described by the great commentator Sridhar Swami as Tarankura, the seed of deliverance from the material world. Since the Supreme Godhead is absolute, his holy name and his sound vibration Omkar are as good as he himself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that the holy name or Omkar the transcendental representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, has all the potencies of the Personality of Godhead. Namna makari bahudha nija sarva shaktis tatrapita niyamita smaranena nakala. All potencies are invested in the holy vibration of the holy name of the Lord. There is no doubt that the holy name of the Lord, or Omkar, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. In other words, anyone who chants Omkar and the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, immediately meets the Supreme Lord directly in His sound form. In the Narada Pancharatra, it is clearly said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, personally appears before the chanter who engages in chanting the Astakshar, or eight-syllable mantra, Om Namo Narayan. A similar statement in the Mandukya Upanishad declares that whatever one sees in the spiritual world is all an expansion of the spiritual potency of Omkar. On the basis of all the Upanishads, Srila Jiva Goswami says that Omkar is the Supreme Absolute Truth and is accepted as such by all the Acharyas and authorities. Omkar is beginningless, changeless, supreme, and free from deterioration and external contamination. Omkar is the origin, middle, and end of everything, and any living entity who thus understands Omkar, attains the perfection of spiritual identity in Omkar. Omkar, being situated in everyone's heart, is Ishwara, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam, Ridesha Juna Tishtati Omkar is as good as Vishnu because Omkar is as all-pervasive as Vishnu. One who knows Omkar and Lord Vishnu to be identical 
no longer has to lament or hanker. One who chants Omkar no longer remains a Sudra, but immediately comes to the position of a Brahman. Simply by chanting Omkar, one can understand the whole creation to be one unit or an expansion of the energy of the Supreme Lord. Idam hi vishvam bhagavan ivetaro yato jagatstana niroda sambhava. Translation The Supreme Lord, Personality of Godhead, is himself this cosmos, and still he is aloof from it. From him only this cosmic manifestation has emanated. In him it rests, and unto him it enters after annihilation. End translation. Bhagavatam 1.5.20 Although one who does not understand concludes otherwise, Srimad Bhagavatam states that the entire cosmic manifestation is but an expansion of the energy of the Supreme Lord. Realization of this is possible simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord, Omkar. One should not, however, foolishly conclude that because the Supreme Personality of Godhead is omnipotent, we have manufactured a combination of letters, A, U, and M, to represent him. Factually, the transcendental sound, Omkar, although a combination of the three letters, A, U, and M, has transcendental potency, and one who chants Omkar will very soon realize Omkar and Lord Vishnu to be non-different. Krishna declares, Pranava Sarva Vedishu Translation. I am the syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. End translation. Bhagavad Gita 7 8. One should therefore conclude that among the many incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Omkar is the sound incarnation. All the Vedas accept this thesis. One should always remember that. The holy name of the Lord and the Lord Himself are always identical. Abhinat van nama nami no. Since Omkar is the basic principle of all Vedic knowledge, it is uttered before one begins to chant any Vedic hymn. Without Omkar, no Vedic mantra is successful. The Goswamis therefore declare that. Pranava, Omkar, is the complete representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and they have analyzed Omkar in terms of its alphabetical constituents as follows. A Karano Chate Krishna, Sarva Lokaika Nayaka, U Karano Chate Radha. Makaro Jivavachika. Omkar is a combination of the letters A, U, and M. A, Karano, Chate Krishna. The letter A, Akara, refers to Krishna, who is Sarvalokaika Nyayaka, the master of all living entities and planets material and spiritual. Nayaka means leader. He is the supreme leader. Nicho nichanam chetanas chetananam. The letter U, Ukar, indicates Srimati Radharani, the pleasure potency of Krishna. And M, Makara, indicates the living entities, Jivas. This Aum is the complete combination of Krishna, his potency, and his eternal servitors. In other words, Omkara represents Krishna, his name, fame, pastimes, entourage, expansions, devotees, potencies, 
and everything else pertaining to him. Sarva Vishvadama Omkar is the resting place of everything, just as Krishna is the resting place of everything. Brahmano hi pratishtaham. The Mayavadi philosophers consider many Vedic mantras to be the Mahavakya or principal Vedic mantra, such as Tatvamasi, Chandogya Upanishad 687, Idam Sarvam Yat Ayamatma, and Brahmedam Sarvam, Brihad Aranyakya Upanishad. 251. At Vidam Sarvam, Chandokya Upanishad 725.2. In Neha Nanasti Kinshana, Kata Upanishad 2.1.11. That is a great mistake. Only Omkar is the Mahavakya. All these other mantras, which the Mayavadis accept as the Mahavakya, are only incidental. They cannot be taken as the Mahavakya or Mahamantra. The mantra Tatvamasi indicates only a partial understanding of the Vedas, unlike Omkar, which represents the full understanding of the Vedas. Therefore, the transcendental sound, which includes all Vedic knowledge, is Omkar, Pranava. Aside from Omkar, None of the words uttered by the followers of Shankaracharya can be considered the Mahavakya. They are merely passing remarks. Shankaracharya, however, has never stressed chanting of the Mahavakya, Omkar. He has accepted only Tatvamasi as the Mahavakya. Imagining the living entity to be God, he has misrepresented all the mantras of the Vedanta Sutra, with the motive of proving that there is no separate existence of living entities and the Supreme Absolute Truth. This is similar to the politician's attempt to prove non-violence from Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is violent to demons, and to attempt to prove that Krishna is not violent is ultimately to deny Krishna as such explanations of Bhagavad Gita are absurd, so also is Shankaracharya's explanation of Vedanta Sutra. And no sane and reasonable man will accept it. At present, however, Vedanta Sutra is misrepresented not only by the so called Vedantis, but also by other unscrupulous persons who are so degraded that they even recommend that sannyasis eat meat, fish, and eggs. In this way, the so-called followers of Shankar, the impersonalist Mayavadis, are sinking lower and lower. How can these degraded men explain Vedanta Sutra, which is the essence of all Vedic literature? Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has declared, Mayavadi basya sunile haya sarvanasa. Anyone who hears commentary on the Vedanta Sutra from the Mayavad school is completely doomed. As explained in Bhagavad Gita, Vedais Chasarva Aham Eva Vedra, all Vedic literature aims to understand Krishna. Bhagavad Gita 1515. Mayavad philosophy, however, has deviated everyone from Krishna. Therefore, there is a great need for the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world to save the world from degradation. Every intelligent and sane man must abandon the philosophical explanation of the Mayavadis and accept the explanation of Vaishnavacharyas. One should read Bhagavad Gita as it is to try to understand the real purpose of the Vedas.